All right, welcome back to yaymath.org and yaymath in studio. My name is Robert Adut, and I created this thing called yaymath, which is now taking on a life of its own on YouTube and around the world, in which we try to connect to people and teach math in connective and emotionally resonant ways. So it's a huge honor to share this gift with you, and I hope it helps you. I hope it helps you learn, and I hope that it makes you want to say, yay math yourself, no matter what you're doing, whether you're in class or brushing your teeth or whatever, even sarcastically, yay math. Yeah. Some people ask if that's sarcastic, and I say it is if you want it to be. So it's big tent, invite all into yay math life. So let's do some, let's distribute some of that love. Let's distribute it out like this, with a throw it out like Frisbee, right? So if we're gonna do the distributive property, it basically has one act and we're gonna do that for the next several exercises, okay? Some people get carried away with distributive property, okay? In short, distributive property is if you have something outside a parentheses set, multiplied, that four distributes, as you can see from our handy dandy guide, that four distributes to the three with multiplication, boom, and to the two. But before we get carried away with this distributive property, some people forget about order of operations. Let's just keep our eye on the prize here. And by order of operations, we need to do what's inside the parentheses first, simplify inside, and then we'll look outside. Kind of like life, simplify in here, then look out here, okay? So what's inside? Three plus two, five. So that's four times five. And four times five is 20. Boom. Now let's distribute. So maybe this is a little misleading. Let's lead you to here. Four times three and a four times a two. Four times three is 12. Four times two plus eight, lo and behold, is 20 again. So we see that it works, okay? Uh, I decided to include this. Sometimes it looks a little wackadoodles, but distributive property does work on the end side, on the back side, because we agree that the order in which we multiply does not matter. You might recall that's called the commutative property. To commute means to move. So I could put this four up here and distribute to the A and B, or I could put the four back here and distribute to the A and B. The order in which we multiply does not matter. Commutative property. But let's just multiply from the back end. Here we go. And four times A and a four times B. So that's four A plus four times B is four B. So there you go, right? So what's really cool about the distributive property besides these simple examples is that we could use it for what I like to call street math. I also call it sometimes Costco math. Here's why I call it Costco math. Let's say you're in Costco. I don't subscribe to the brand. I'm not endorsed or I'm not paid to mention Costco. But we all have to do mental math. That's basically what it is. We're standing in a store and we need to do some multiplication in our minds. So let's say you're looking at 15 of something. Maybe uh, there's a, a pack of 12 cans of something, right? Cans of liquid, six cans of soda, and you want to buy 15 of those cases for some party or some event or something. How many are there, right? So this might be hard to do in our minds, but with the distributive property, we can break it up, right? We can break up this 12. So instead of 15 times 12, what if I said 15 times 10 plus two? See what I did? So instead of just looking at 12 as a number by itself, we could think of it as 10, 10 plus 2. And then we distribs. <laughs> distribs, pork style. <laughs> Beef distribs. Here we go. So, 15 times 10, 150. 15 times 2, 30. And there we go, we got 180 in the house. It's kind of cool, right? You can like, separate and distribute however you want, right? If I wanted to do commutative property again, let's say homie wanted to do like 12 times 15, and then maybe 12 times, you know, stuff like this, like 10 and five, right? 
you could think of it in your mind. Sometimes I ask students to do the following. When they're doing 12 times 15 and they get a little like confused about what it is, so I'm like, okay, instead of 12 times 15, give me 12 times 10. What's 12 times 10? 120. And then you hold 120 in your hand. All right, I see 120. I'm holding 120 in this hand. And then 12 times 5. 12 times 5 is 60. So I'm holding 60 in my other hand. 12 times 10, 120 here, 60. I'm looking at them together. And together added up is 180. So distributive property works in lots of different ways. We could also make it work with subtraction. So by subtraction, I mean, instead of eight times 19 is splitting the 19 into 10 plus nine, instead of 10 plus nine, what if we split the 19 into 20 minus one? Check that out. So we could also do distributive property this way. I don't know about you, but multiplying these just straight in my head, like I'd be doing a lot of this look up thing, uh, give me a second, don't rush me, I hate pressure, ah, whatever, I don't wanna do it. But if I could say, instead of 19, 20 minus one, now it could do eight times 20, that's okay, because it's eight times two, which is 16, add a zero, so that's 160. That's distributing the eight to the 20, and then distributing the eight to the negative one, so eight times minus one, is minus eight. And now I could do this if I have $160, subtract $8, that's 152. How about that? Kind of special, 152. So distributive works with minus as well. Okay, let's do some fun ones maybe with two and a half times 66 or 66 times two and a half. Let's break this up, break it up. Break it up, you two. Boom. I suggest two plus one half. Because that way we can mess around with the 66 that way. So 66 times two, two 66s would be 120 plus 12. See, I just did distributive property in my head with that. I broke that into 60 and six. If you, if you heard 60 plus six, you see what I just did? So I did 66 times two is two times 60 and two times six. So I'm like, it's a distributive party instead of a distributive property. The distributive party, property. What, what's this, <laughs> what am I doing? Um, it's a hip jiggle. Uh, let's do it. So that would be 120 plus 12 is 132. And now take that off. Half of 66 is 33. This is one, um, six, five. All right, I feel comfortable with that. 132 plus 33 is 165, bravo. Let's do a couple more. So the distributive property also works with simplifying expressions like this. Um, and you'll notice we have X's in these little exercises. So we distribute like we've been doing before. The three distributes, la, 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 wink, 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 wink. And the two distributes, la, 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 wink, 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 wink. All right, so now that I sang like a duck, we can distribute the three and the two. Let's do it. So we got three times two X is six X. Three times five is positive five, is positive 15, like that. Distribute plus two to six x is 12 x. Distribute two to minus one. Two times minus one is minus two. And now we need to group, right? Or we need to combine. This act of combining different terms that are alike, that can be grouped, that can be combined, has a specific name. That act is called, maybe you've heard of it, combining like terms. Okay, so we see which of these four terms are like, are alike in that matter. So I see that 6x and 12x can be added. Sort of like if I had six x-ray machines and 12 x-ray machines and I added them, I would have 18 x-ray machines. And if I had $15 and I had subtracted $2, I'd be left with positive 13 dollars. 
So that would be the simplification of these two distributions. Okay, so that's one. The last one we'll do in this particular clip is this. So I know we're comfortable with distributing the two. Let's go ahead and do that. Get that done. So two times four X is eight X. And two times minus one is minus two. Notice there's no number here, but parentheses in front of this negative or after the negative, you can say. So in a sense, there's this sort of like a secret hidden minus one chilling over here. And that means that we have to distribute negative one to both of these terms. Uh, traditionally, that's called distribute the negative. So we're going to distribute the negative, not to our lives, but definitely to this problem. Because we don't want negativity in our lives, but mathematically we must. We're compelled to. So what is negative distributed to the x? We can take the one off now. We know it's there. Negative distributed to the x would become minus x. Negative distributed to positive 7 would become minus 7. In a sense, this whole entity, this whole piece is subjected to the negativity of this sign. And that traverses throughout every term inside those parentheses. All right. Now we're going to combine like terms. Again, we see the x's. What's 8 of something minus 1 of that same thing? 7 of that thing. 7x. What is a debt of two or a lack of two? And then a further lack of seven. That means altogether we're down nine or a negative nine. All right, cool. That was distributive property or distributive pata, pata day. Distributive pata day. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Later.